Hi, it's Craig on my R2 Building channel and on this video I'm going to talk about the foot drive systems in R2's feet. Um, talk a little bit about the backstory of what our club has done and kind of a progression of what I have done in my droids. So I'm going to show you what's going on here. So the history of foot drives in the R2 Builders Club. In the early days of the club, we were making a lot of these foot drives ourselves, kind of homebrew, using windshield wiper motors, using surplus motors. Some of the guys in the club had a little bit more money to spend, and when those Razor scooters first started coming out around the year 2000, um, they weren't cheap. They were about $150. $50 on sale, $170 regularly, and there were some guys who were actually going to Toys R Us buying brand new in-the-box Razor scooters, two of them, just to take them home, take a hacksaw to them, and chop them up and put them in R2's feet. And mind you, back in the day, this was not a tried-and-true method of making a foot drive for a droid. This was still very experimental um let's see if it works kind of a thing so that was a little bit out of my price range uh for my droid was doing the razor scooter drive so i went with the most uh cheap and frugal option long time ago um you know back around the year 2000 these Saturn windshield wiper motors were on the surplus market and they were very cheap. They were everywhere. You could find these things everywhere. They were about 10, 12 bucks. We found out very early with these Saturn windshield wiper motors is they have a bunch of connections in there. And we figured out which ones were like a common and a low speed, a common and a high speed. Then I think we figured out if you connected the low speed and the high speed, you got super high speed. But the biggest problem with these things is one of the motor brushes in there was attached to the chassis of the motor. And if you were reversing polarity, you went from being uh, negative polarity on the chassis to positive polarity on the chassis. And if you had it in a droid and they were connected with metal, now you were arcing positive and negative through the, through the metal of the droid. So we found out really early how to take these apart and snip that wire and make the casing of the motor not connected to the motor brush so what i had done here and let me shine the light in here to show you was i had put bicycle sprockets on a custom hub on the motor and then a tiny sprocket custom welded to a washer drill press perfectly aligned so it doesn't wobble and what you're going to notice about this is even though R2's two feet are mirror images of each other, you notice that my drivetrain doesn't, it's not a mirror image, it's exactly identical. Motor on the right, drive to the left. Motor to the right, drive to the left. The reason for this was I found out very early on, playing with these Saturn motors was, in one polarity, they spun really fast. You reverse that polarity and they spun a little bit slower. Well, I didn't want to do a mirror image because if I had drive on the right, I'm sorry, motor on the right, drive on the left, and then over here I had motor on the left, drive on the right, one of these would be running forward, one of these would be running backwards, one of these would be running a higher RPM, one would be running a slower RPM, and R2 wouldn't be driving straight. So I had to do that. Um, and it worked. It worked great. And uh, it, in case you're wondering, this middle foot is a fixed ankle. That's why I just have one caster in here. So, uh, And I didn't even think about wheelbase on this thing because, um, you know, this is on the Mini. He's very small. And uh, the wheelbase from the caster to the drive wheel was um, roughly, you know, eight and three quarter, nine inches. Um, it's a pretty good wheelbase, so I didn't even think about it. Then we move on to the full-size droids where people were running the scooter motors. Now, by the time I refurbed this guy, um, the Razor scooter parts were in the surplus. You could buy the replacement parts online, and they were relatively cheap and reasonable. So, um, as you can see by the price sticker still on there, I paid $12.50 for this at American Science and Surplus. And I got two of them. 
and um, these are uh, these are mirror images of each other. Um, they run the same speed and forward and backwards, so I was able to do that. So this is where I messed up. My droids do a two to three legged conversion and back again. In two legged mode, R2 has to be very stable, and stable meaning where the wheels touch the floor. Um, you got to have a wide stance of wheels in here. Now, I mean, I'm not even talking about driving them around in two-legged mode, which I do, by the way. A lot of the guys in the club will say, well, you don't dare drive R2 around in two-legged mode. Uh, well, I, I do. Um, it's, it's a neat effect. R2 goes from three-legged mode to two-legged mode, and then he's um, standing there looking around, and he'll rotate and look at someone. And I'll even do the thing where I take the joystick and I feather the joystick right, left, right, left, right, left. And R2 will kind of do that little waddle scoot thing towards somebody. It's a great effect. I love it. But the the stance here with this big giant wheel is only about, you know, seven and a half inches. And that is not a very stable platform for R2 to be sitting on touching the floor here and here at only seven and a half inches. The problem this is so small is I have this big giant wheel in there and because it almost wants to rub on the foot shell way up here the wheel had to be so much further so from the edge of the shell to floor contact it's like four inches as opposed to this one being really close to the shell way down here where it's much wider from the shell to where it touches the floor it's only about two inches so on a custom drive with a tiny wheel uh, you get a much better stance now on this guy I didn't even think about the swivel caster I'm like okay so the swivel caster you know it can't go any much further than forward than this because it's gonna hit the shell so it's back here to here on this one I use the Omni ball um, as far forward as I can because if I put a swivel caster, in order for it to clear here, it would have to be back here going forward. And where it contacts the floor here to here on a swivel caster would even be much shorter. So R2 would be very tippy wanting to fall over. So I kind of wish, even though the scooter drives are more affordable by today's standards, I wish I had gone with a custom drive on this because I could have taken... A very tiny drive wheel like this maybe even smaller geared it just right so this guy still went crazy fast and I wouldn't have to worry about stability in two-legged mode so that's just something I'm just throwing out there if you're making a 232 you may want to go with something smaller wheel I don't know if they make uh, scooters with a much I think this is like a six inch wheel right here you know five or six um, oh, in case you're wondering, this middle leg does pivot on an ankle, so that's why I had to do two casters in there to keep that middle foot on the floor because the ankle does pivot, so just in case you're wondering on that. So that is foot drives on this guy. Um, on my aluminum and brass droid, I did find some Razor scooters at... Uh, where was that? That was Big Lots. They had them at $49. I, at $49 a piece, I did buy two Razor scooters at Big Lots to put in the aluminum brass droid. Um, so just in case you were wondering on that one. So um, thinking about stance between drive wheel and caster, um, two-legged mode. If you do do the two to three-legged mode, you're going to want a wider stance. So keep that in mind. Maybe a more custom, smaller drive wheel way back here, and then a Omni caster way up in the front, so you don't have to deal with the swivel caster clearances. Uh, I've rambled on enough on this video. This is Craig on my R2 Builders channel. I hope you found this informative. Um, it's barely entertainment, but uh, hey, if you want to, give me a like. Catch you later.